Hello everyone, it's Guru Raza from the University of Mother God Church, also known as Kelly Evers, the lady who strips for God and dances to save men's souls. I'm reading from my book, Guru Raza and Her Devotees. And I'm talking about chapter two, how to install me into your heart if you want to be my devotee. Now you might say, why should I be her devotee? Well, when you become my devotee, you receive power. When you link to me, connect to me, bond to me, my spiritual power goes to you. There's plenty of it. This is a power that cures cancer. This is a power that transforms people, that brings them from being spiritually dead to being born again. This is a power that takes you from being high up to the highest within yourself, the sainthood of you. You go, I've had, I've, I've had some amazing, amazing results from people who were high up, who they linked to me as a guru, they boom, went higher. The power here is very. Now, I'm talking about children and bonding to parents. Once par puberty hits, <laughs> the glands become active and the child is no longer bonded to you as much. By the very nature of biology, the child must think about breaking away and starting its own family, leaving the nest. The windows to you are closed. The child shuts you out, and it must be so, because it will not grow through continued dependency. For good or ill, it must stretch its wings and fly, and if it falls, it falls in trying to live. But it must try. That is why you must do all you can for a child before puberty, before the need to break away from, your, from you occurs. Now let us examine this in the context of guru devotee. A person comes to a guru wanting self-realization or enlightenment. Your job as guru is to guide and nurture that soul until it reaches its potential. Then what? He leaves. He has to stretch out his wings and start his own family. He has to then be a guru and give birth to children. If he stays with you, it is unnatural and unproductive. Of course, you can stay in the church or in the vicinity or stay friends. But they must go their way without fear and without provocation. They must be free. I do recall that my original guru, of whom I spoke in Gurus from Hell, Part 2, Reverend Bernard Talba, told me in answer to my question that it would take six years for me to receive all that she had to give. Six years is not a long time, by the way. By some coincidence, although I tried to leave her twice, I remained for exactly six years as devotee. I had known her a year before that, but did not pledge myself. A guru is not forever. The guru lives in you, but the guru does not dominate or hold authority over you for the rest of your life. I hope I'm making myself clear. I have had many gurus. Oh, boy, have I. And each one enhanced my spiritual life. You must never hold on to one person of God. One person. Never. Feeling that that is the absolute for the rest of your life. You must have received all that you can or most of what you can from that guru, and onward you must go. My first gurus were Jesus and Mary. Although I reached all the highest points a Christian is capable of reaching, which would be oneness with Jesus and him crucified, which would be mystical marriage and martyrdom, I still receive from Jesus and Mary. I still receive. But I do not worship only them. I went into yoga and received from the gurus there and received abundantly. Since God is infinite, remember, do not get stuck in one groove. This does not mean you jump like musical chairs with one week this and another week that. You stick with one guru and one discipline until you have reached its apex. When you have received what is there, rest and then move on. This is in no way an insult or disrespect to the guru you receive from. Chapter 3. <laughs> This is chapter three. It's my book, Guru Rasa and Her Devotees, available on Lulu Press.
the salsa, I think, on that inside. Okay. Why is celibacy, <laughs> celibacy important to bond with the guru? I have had a lot of experience with teaching young people as a minister and community organizer in my area of Brooklyn. I learned that when you had boys and girls together, they could not concentrate. <laughs> and you could not control them. The entire time all they did was make goo-goo eyes at each other. <laughs> oh, this is funny. I haven't looked at this in years. But this is the truth. This is absolute the fact. <clears throat> it was impossible for them to learn because they were, you understand me? The, the instinct, the boys and the girls' instinct, they were making goo-goo eyes at each other. <laughs> like I said. The, all they wanted to do was play and flirt. It was impossible for them to learn. These were the ones, of course, who had reached puberty. So in the end, I separated them into groups. They were the daughters of the light and the sons of the light, and they met at separate times. Then there was peace. The military tried to have males and females housed together, but it didn't work. <laughs> now, if a man bonds with me as his guru and wants to reach enlightenment, I must be his primary or number one relationship. All other must be second best. So if he has a wife or a steady means she's second to me. No woman will take that. She will be heard as biologically the woman you are with in bed is your number one. That is yet another reason for celibacy. Without it, there is not the proper bonding with the guru. I can imagine that after you reach enlightenment, perhaps then you can return to a normal life and have a woman or wife. I know that Hindus want you to get all that out of your system first, then find enlightenment. But to me, God is first and do it first because only one thing is necessary. I mean it. If you wait, if you wait too long, I mean it. Hear me. If you wait to have the wife, to finish your wife, the duties of the child, the marriage, the children, and all that, you might be dead. You might be, you might die! And you won't reach enlightenment. You won't reach the state with God that you want to reach. You can't put this off. You can't. Please, please don't put this one. What if you die before your time and lose your chance to find your God? No, do what is most important first, and then the other things can follow. After all, we are not in a race to have children. The world is overpopulated anyway. We are shoving out all the room for the other species and polluting the earth at breakneck speed. We could slow down childbirth to relieve the planet. This is serious. I'm not joking. This is serious about what, what I'm saying here. There are different degrees of closeness to God and intimacy. When I say celibate, I am talking about those whose commitment is total and who will give up all for the, that miracle of seeing God. In my quest, if I could find two or even one such person, I could do all that I have with that person, myself and one employee, a totally committed and capable person. Who is giving 100% is more effective than 20 who are lukewarm. The halfway disciples are babies and they wear me out. They need to be diapered and breast or bottle fed all the time. You wear me out. They need to get up in the middle of the night to feed them. They are infants. The church moves ahead slowly when a guru has many infants and no partners. I hope you understand me. But a fully committed and capable person one who is totally sincere, strong, and self-sacrificing, even if that person has not yet reached enlightenment, but has the capacity to do so, this person and I can do miracles. I have not yet met someone like that, but maybe I will. Am I complaining? No. I'm happy with whatever God gives me. Even if I have to live without building a church as long as it is built after I die, that is good enough. 
After all, our blessed Lord had no church during his lifetime. Ah, the revelation. In the sense of having a building, a center, and a congregation. He set the groundwork and it went from there. Our Holy Mother did see the beginning of the church and I'm sure that made her very happy. But mostly she suffered in the longing to be with her divine son and with God. Finally, her torture was over and she ascended into her eternal glory. They are doing wonderful work from there. I'll be happy with that myself. Whatever God gives me, I'm grateful for. This was written in June. Oh boy. June 21, 2005. To be continued.